Hi everyone, and welcome back to Inside Tech. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at another flagship pair of active noise cancelling headphones. These are the Lagoon ANC from Biodynamic, a company typically associated with professional grade audio equipment, who are now offering a more consumer friendly product, aiming to go toe to toe with the likes of Sony and Bose. The headphones first announced at this year's CES are boasting a huge 45 hour battery life, unique sound personalization software, and an innovative light guidance system. They're now finally available to the public, so I've decided to check out their design, all of the new features, and see how they compare against the best headphones on the market. From a company like Biodynamic, you can expect the Lagoon ANC to offer great sounding audio, but at their high $400 price tag, I would hope that these can deliver on their other features too. Let's take a look. The headphones come packaged with a premium hard shell carry case that holds the headphones in their folded position to minimise the overall footprint. It feels pretty robust and durable, and even has a little elastic strap to store your cables. The headphones themselves are made from a high quality black plastic, but have an aluminium enforced headband for support, which is exposed when adjusting the headband to size. Each ear cup features the Biodynamic logo, along with a couple of microphones and a grey fabric mesh on the inside. I have here the Traveller edition, which has the all black design, but there is also a grey and brown model called the Explorer available too, and this is the only difference separating the two. The headband offers some really nice and soft padding beneath the artificial leather, so there's no soreness at the top of the head when wearing these for long periods of time. The ear cups also offer some soft padding, but I did find this to be a bit on the thin side, and a little more padding would have been nice here. The ear cups do offer good flexibility though, able to both pivot and rotate just over 90 degrees. The overall build quality here is excellent, and the high quality materials used make these feel like a premium pair of headphones. The headphones weigh 283 grams, so they're not especially heavy, but there are definitely lighter alternatives on the market. As I mentioned earlier, the soft padding on the headband prevents any soreness, or the headphones feeling heavy on your head, but you might start to notice the clamping force over your ears after an hour or so. The ear cups are held pretty tightly against your head, so you may experience some listening fatigue during long listening sessions. I also found the ear cups to be relatively small for an over ear design, so they're not especially breathable and there isn't much space, particularly if you have larger ears. Strangely enough though, the headband is on the larger size, and even at its smallest setting, this might be too large for smaller heads. The advantage of having a tight seal formed with the ear cups though, is that the passive noise isolation is excellent, and blocks out the majority of external noise even before ANC is turned on. This also helps to minimise sound leakage, so only when listening at loud volumes might the person sitting next to you be disturbed. You'll find all of the controls and ports located on the right ear cup. We have here a USB-C charging port, a 3.5mm headphone jack, an on-off switch, which is also used to enter pairing mode, and finally a switch to activate the different levels of ANC. When you first turn on the headphones, handy voice prompts will announce to you your connected devices, the remaining battery level, and once you press play, also the Bluetooth codec that you're using. I don't know of any other headphones that are actually doing this, so the voice prompts were especially useful here, but you were able to turn these off completely, if you prefer. For controlling playback, there are touch controls located on the outside of the right ear cup. You can double tap to play pause music, or to answer and hang up phone calls, and if you press and hold the touchpad for about 2 seconds, you can invoke your phone's voice assistant. Horizontal strokes will skip tracks forward and backwards, and you can also drag and hold for fast forward or rewind. Vertical strokes are of course used for volume control, and again you can drag and hold to change the volume too. The touchpad is quite sensitive, and I did find myself occasionally skipping the track back when I instead wanted to increase the volume. Fortunately, you can adjust the sensitivity using the MIY app, which goes some way to mitigating this problem. There's also a small ridge around the edge of the ear cup, which means that you have a smaller space to use the touch gestures, since you can't easily swipe from the edge of the ear cup, but in general the touch controls were pretty accurate and useful. One change I would make though, is moving at least some of, if not all of the ports and switches, onto the left ear cup. I tend to prefer a more equal balance, and this also helps to avoid accidental touch gestures when reaching for the buttons. There's also an auto pause system in place, which is activated when the headphones are left laying down horizontally for a few seconds, and the music then resumes playing when the headphones are picked back up. The idea here is that you can auto pause and play when laying these down on your desk, but I must admit that I prefer the auto pause systems in other headphones that pause the music when they're taken off your head. If you're using the Lagoon ANC with your head down working on a project, there's a chance that you could accidentally pause your music, which could become annoying. As we've already seen, there are three settings for active noise cancelling, off, level 1, and level 2. Level 2 is maximum cancellation, and level 1 is essentially a lighter version that doesn't cancel quite as much noise, but is less demanding on the battery life. 
Having a physical switch here is pretty convenient, and saves you from having to pull out your phone to adjust the ANC. There is an audible hiss, particularly on level 2, but you shouldn't hear this at all with music playing. In terms of performance, the ANC is above average, and these do a fair job at blocking out lower frequency sounds like passing traffic or the rumble of a plane engine. They do struggle to block out voices and other higher frequency sounds though, and the performance is nowhere near the level of Bose or Sony, which was disappointing. Generally, since the passive noise isolation was so good, I tended to just use these with ANC turned off to maximise the battery life. Now I couldn't make this review without touching on the headphones' unique light guide system. This feature activates automatically when you remove the headphones, and can display different coloured LEDs to indicate Bluetooth pairing status, alert you to an incoming call, or to indicate the battery level. The lights will turn off after 10 seconds if the headphones aren't being used, and also whilst you're wearing them to save on battery. The light system is the Lagoon ANC's unique selling point, and certainly adds some personality to the headphones. The lights are striking and vibrant, but sadly, I just didn't really find this any more useful than any other headphones. Perhaps the most practical application here are the left and right ear cup indicators, but aside from this, the system doesn't contribute much more beyond the aesthetics. The concept for the light system came from the idea that the standard external LEDs might be distracting to others. Personally, I feel like this is solving a problem that doesn't really exist. Typical LEDs on the outside of the ear cup tend to be quite small and pretty discreet, but the light system is still undeniably cool, and I did enjoy it overall. The Lagoon ANC offer an impressive battery life of 45 hours with ANC turned off, even more than Jabra's Elite 85H and easily one of the best on the market. The battery life takes a significant hit with ANC turned on, dropping down to just over 24 hours, so expect a battery life somewhere in between the two, depending on which level of ANC you use. The headphones use the latest USB-C connection for charging, although sadly there are no fast charge options here, so you can expect to fully charge the headphones in around 3 hours. When charging the headphones, you can make use of the inner LEDs to see how charged up the headphones are. The colours pulsate from red, through yellow, and up to solid green as the battery becomes full, and this is one of the more useful applications of the light guide system. If the headphones are completely out of battery, then you can keep listening as wired headphones using the audio cable. You can also quickly check the remaining battery life with a voice prompt by sliding up on the power switch during use. When it comes to connectivity, the Lagoon ANC offer three great features, and one not so good. The not so good is that they're only using Bluetooth 4.2. Now this standard is still pretty good and should offer decent stability and range. In fact in my line of sight test, the headphones reached a fair 268 feet. For a 2019 pair of headphones though, and especially at this price point, I would have liked to have seen the latest Bluetooth 5 here. Using these indoors, the headphones remained connected even through multiple walls and obstacles, but I did experience a couple of dropouts as I moved over 30 feet away. Using these with your phone in your pocket though, you'll have no problems at all. As for the great features, the headphones support AAC, Aptex, and even Aptex Low Latency, so those on Android will be able to take advantage of the lower latency codecs. Watching video on iOS was fine on Netflix and YouTube, but the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice an ever so slight delay with the audio. On Android, this wasn't a problem at all, and the video and audio were perfectly synchronised. The second great feature is that multi-device pairing is supported here. You're able to be paired with two smartphones, or even a computer and a smartphone, at the same time, although I did experience some connection issues when paired with a MacBook. Exploiting this feature, playing music on one device and then switching over to the other is as simple as just pressing play. And the third great feature here is NFC pairing, so those with certain Android devices can simply tap their phone against the left ear cup to instantly connect or disconnect to the headphones without the need to navigate through any Bluetooth menus. This feature is extremely convenient, especially if you use multiple devices and want to quickly switch up which ones are connected. The headphones do of course have multiple microphones on the ear cups, so you are able to make phone calls with them. As you can probably hear, the voice quality is very good, and it's not too dissimilar from using my phone's microphone. In loud environments, you might still get a bit of background noise filtering in, but otherwise the Lagoon ANC are pretty good when it comes to making phone calls. If there was one area I'd expect Biodynamic to succeed in, it would be in audio quality, and here they have absolutely delivered. The Lagoon ANC are easily one of the best sounding headphones on the market, offering rich and detailed audio that's really nicely balanced. There is an ever so slight boost to the bass for a more pleasing sound, but in general the sound profile is pretty flat and neutral. There's good separation here, and the soundstage offers a real sense of depth. There's great clarity in the mid-range, and you can really appreciate the individual plucks of a guitar string on acoustic tracks, but pop and dance tracks sound equally as impressive with some deep, thumping bass. I'd say that the quality is definitely up there with the likes of Sony, if not slightly better, since the bass isn't as boosted. I also noticed that the headphones have an extended frequency range up to 30kHz, where typically headphones of this standard operate up to around 20kHz. Whilst most of these frequencies will be inaudible to the human ear, 
the extended range opens up the possibility of adding that extra detail into your music that you wouldn't be able to experience with a typical pair of headphones. The Lagoon A&C are simply a great sounding pair of headphones, and one of the best for pure music listening. Now just to touch quickly on the MIUI app, we've already seen that you're able to adjust the sensitivity of the touch controls, but there are a couple of extra features here too. The first one is the sound personalization setting, which allows you to take a hearing test for each ear, and depending on how you respond to the various frequencies, the headphones can automatically adjust the audio playback in order to adapt to your individual hearing. Since my hearing is quite good, I personally didn't notice much of a difference, but I can imagine that those of an older generation, or who have damaged hearing, could find this feature very useful, especially if your hearing is different in different ears. I can't personally comment on how successfully this feature works, but certainly the concept is excellent, and not something you typically see with headphones. Another useful feature here is sound dosage, which measures the duration and volume of your daily listening, and can recommend to you when to give your ears a break from listening, or even to let you know that you're okay to turn the volume up a bit. These features are pretty unique, and I enjoyed the app's clean user interface, but it is very feature light, and I would like to see more features added here in the future, such as a custom equaliser. At the very least, I think you should be able to update the headphones firmware from the app itself, but instead I had to download the desktop companion in order to do this. Most ANC headphones can update the firmware through the app, so it was strange to see this basic feature missing. Throughout this review, I've picked up on a few drawbacks and flaws with these headphones, and at first it might seem like I'm being a little bit harsh. Ultimately, I am drawing these comparisons to the very best of the best, and the Lagoon ANC deserve their place amongst some of the best ANC headphones you can buy. But the reason I've been so critical, and ultimately the biggest disappointment with these headphones, is their huge price tag. The headphones are retailing for a hefty $399 or £359, $50 more than Sony's WH-1000X M3, which are arguably the best ANC headphones that money can buy. I think that if you're going to market these headphones at $400, then the ANC performance, at the very least, needs to be on par with the market's leaders, and sadly, it just isn't. The Lagoon ANC's battery life and sound quality are excellent, but unfortunately this just isn't enough to justify its high price tag. And simply put, there are other competing headphones that are offering more at lower prices. The Lagoon ANC headphones should be priced $100 cheaper, and in this way, they'd offer slightly poorer ANC and Bluetooth performance, but have the advantage of that lower price point. Jabra's Elite 85H are a great example of this. They too don't offer the same performance as Sony or Bose, but at over $50 cheaper, offer a compelling alternative. Biodynamics Lagoon ANC are undoubtedly a fantastic pair of headphones, and certainly one of the best for listening to music. Their battery life and sound quality is superb, the multi-device pairing and low latency aptX support is excellent, and I really wanted to love them, but it's hard to recommend them at their current price point. If they're perhaps able to add a few more features to the headphones through the companion app, and drastically lower their price point, then they'll certainly become a much more compelling purchase. But what do you guys think about these headphones? Would you be happy paying up to $400 for a high quality pair of headphones, or do you think that there are better value headphones out there? Of course, let me know your favourite ANC headphones down in the comments section below, and if you found this video helpful at all, then please show your support by giving it a thumbs up. Very soon I'll have my in-depth review of Sony's new noise-cancelling true wireless earphones, the WF-1000X M3s, so make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on to make sure you're notified when that video goes live. Be sure to check out the channel on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Inside Tech Limited for all of the latest news and some extra content too. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.